All right, well, of course, the first thing we're gonna do is wash our hands. Now more than ever. So. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So the first thing we're gonna do is called a mashed fava bean toast. I have never cooked with fava beans. I've never worked with them before. And uh, so let's have at it. I did read up on this a little bit. It's kind of like taking a, a string bean. You open it and you take the seeds out, but we're not done yet. And after you've shelled the beans, you need to peel them. So you can see, you just, it's not that hard. It just, it's, it's time consuming. So you can see this just peels right off. Okay, so we're trying an alternate method, which I read about, that is supposed to make it easier to take the skins off the fava beans. So these have just been taken out of the pod. I have a pan of boiling water here. Let's drop those in, and they're supposed to go for a minute. So my colander is otherwise occupied right now. I'm just gonna gently try to drain these from the water. Between the two of us, there's at least one brain into the ice bath, and let me pluck the other ones out up here. And of course they went into the garbage disposer. But anyway, let's give it, and what should happen now is these should just slide right out. And it, is, it does seem to be a little easier than what I was doing before. See how they're brighter once you boil them? So I'm going to mince a clove of garlic and if you've not done this before, that takes the skin right off. Here we go. Now it's coming right out of its skin. There's a little piece here. And I've got a nice chef's knife and I love it. This is my everyday knife. Uh, I can thank the late Anthony Bourdain. I read his book, Kitchen Confidential, and uh, he's the one that recommended this particular knife. It's a global chef's knife and uh, it really, I, I thought to myself before I got it, you know, what difference can a knife make? But uh, it's amazing. It does such a nice job. Getting a little rosemary ready, which I'm also going to mince. And in Southern California, anyway, uh, it's kind of a surprise if you don't have rosemary in your backyard. It's just, uh, it's very prolific. And I've got more than a lifetime supply in the, right in my backyard. So that'll be plenty for what I'm gonna do. Get this minced up like the garlic. Okay, I've got a pan on medium high heat. We're gonna put a little Extra virgin olive oil. This comes from uh, Cougar Vineyard and Winery. Temecula Valley olive oil. So I'm gonna finish coating the pan with the olive oil. It's starting to get hot. There we go, nice and coated. I'll give another endorsement. This is um, a Blue Diamond pan. And I saw an ad for it on TV a year and a half ago. Usually these things are gimmicks. and I, But anyway, I, I've been using this daily for almost a year and a half, and it's like brand new. I just love this pan. Okay, the so fava beans are now in the pan. I'm going to hear them sizzling. Just a little bit of salt. This is uh, another one of my favorites, Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Salt. I use this also every day. Take a little ground black pepper. Get these all covered with the oil. I love that sizzle. And uh, the heat, it's interesting, uh, if you can notice, they are getting greener. They're getting brighter as they get hot. And it seems to be the opposite of what you might expect, but they're definitely getting really pretty. Okay, I'm going to add my garlic now, which I have minced. 
and that's going to go right in there. Get that all stirred up together. Oh, is this smelling good? Got the end of the garlic that I'm going to remove. Add some long in there. Look how pretty that color is. And I wish you could smell it, because it smells great. Gonna add a little bit of water. We're gonna turn it down to a simmer. Put a cover on it and just let it simmer away for about 10 minutes. Since I am doing a little bit of product endorsement, uh, Winco is my favorite supermarket to shop and I love their bakery. They do a chipotle sourdough bread that I think is out of this world good. So I'm just taking a few of these slices of the uh, chipotle sourdough. Love, love, love this bread. And just gonna quarter it. And this will be the base for the uh, mashed fava that's now simmering on the stove. Here's the minced rosemary that I'll be adding to it. But the chef's knife, boy, it just, uh, it just slides through things. Okay. All right. Our 10 minutes is up. So let's take this off the heat. Look at those, oh boy, love all the steam coming off. So I have a bowl that I just took out of the convection oven. Right here we have fava beans, garlic, little uh, salt and pepper, and I'm gonna put this into this bowl that I had. Uh, it's nice and warm, it was in the convection oven. And we'll do that. I'm taking them out with a potato masher because I'm going to mash them. It is called mashed fava bean toast, so that's just what we're gonna do. Set this down here and mash these guys. Okay, since the uh, potato masher didn't work terribly well, we're going to try a immersion blender. And I can already see this is going to do the job. Yeah, we've got a nice little mash going on here. Okay, here we have our mash. It came out pretty nicely. The immersion blender, uh, for me anyway, was the trick. So, coming out of the bowl that I had warmed, got my wooden spatula, get all of these in. Okay, and then we're gonna take the rosemary, which I minced earlier. Put the rosemary in, and a little bit of crushed red pepper. When I say a little bit, I like pepper. I like spice, heat, so. That should be good. And let's stir it up a little bit. Nice sizzle, huh? So you can, if you want to make this recipe, uh, give yourself a little time. Uh, I've been at it roughly an hour and a half, give or take. And as you have witnessed, the majority of that was actually taking the skins off of the individual fava beans. So that should be all nicely mixed up. I've got my little toast slices in the toaster. This again is the Chipotle sourdough from Winco, which I have quartered. So just take a spoon, put about yeah, a teaspoon and a half, give or take. I uh, may not win any awards for beauty decoration, but I have a hunch. It, it smells heavenly. And I have a pretty strong feeling it's going to taste divine. Okay, almost done. One final step. I'm going to take our olive oil. 
and just do a little tiny drizzle. Some are getting a little more drizzled than others. Hey, it's it's olive oil. And voila. Mmm. You know what? That was a lot of work and a lot of time. Worth every second. This is heaven. I've never had fava beans that I'm aware of. This won't be the last time. Had an idea in the meantime, a uh, thank you to my collaborator, Ms. Kat Ellis, who's also my videographer, mm -hmm. that we do a little bit of, and we actually had this idea at the same time, a little bit of shredded Parmesan Reggiano. So I just happened to have some already shredded in the fridge. So let's just give it a little dusting. <clears throat> and that should be quite tasty. Alrighty, cocktail time to uh, pair with our appetizer, the uh, mashed fava toast. Oh, that was good. Anyway, uh, thanks again. Uh, all of this is thanks to our friends at Melissa's Produce in uh, LA, Vernon, actually. And this is a Sapurana mango. It says right here, take me home, I'm ready for you. Um, this, I believe, is a Mexican mango. And I've already taken one and diced it. <clears throat> There's a technique where you cut the end of the mango off, you stand it up, and then you cut both sides off, kind of going parallel to the pit, and uh, you make cross cuts to the skin, and then you kind of peel it back. I've got some uh, still photos I took of that, which I'll share with you. So this is ready to go. We've got a little rum. We have a simple syrup that I prepar uh, prepared, and it's called simple syrup because for, among other reasons, it's so simple to make. All you do is uh, boil some water and add sugar to it. And uh, I thought we'd garnish with a no-high pixie tang tangerine from Melissa's Produce. So, let's make a daiquiri. Okay, so we'll just uh, take my pre-diced mango, put it in the blender, Stubborn little fella who just doesn't want to quite come out. There we go. Come for your life, little friend. Okay, done. And of course, I measure everything very carefully. A little bit of uh, white rum. The simple syrup that I made yesterday. So it's just, it, it's literally just water and sugar. And again, measuring very carefully. That looks about right. So I like Mexican key limes. Uh, I guess you can call them Mexican limes or key limes, one or the other. If you've only had a, a daiquiri made with a store-bought daiquiri mix, I highly encourage you to get fresh limes and to make one from scratch. And I think it will become clear to you that it's well worth the extra effort, and it's really not that much work. I really prefer the uh, key limes. Uh, I think they taste better. They're a little extra work, but then they smell so good. We're almost ready. That's the last half lime squeezed. And now it's going to get into the blender. Okay, this is a frozen mango daiquiri as you witnessed made from scratch. <laughs> nice little peaks there. Boy, I measured that just about right, didn't I? Huh? Okay, and let's just do a little bit of garnish here with the Ojai Pixie Tangerine. 
turn it so you can see the look at the color of that isn't that beautiful and salute man that's good mmm